Hello again, folks. Tomorrow and Sunday we have sprints. Probably, hopefully, you've all heard about it by now. But I'm here to talk about it again. Sprints will happen at a different venue. Please don't be the person that tries to get here in the morning tomorrow, only to figure out that the conference center is probably closed, or at least empty. So it's a different venue. By the way, I'm showing you the page. This is on EuroPython, on the EuroPython website, all right? Just go to Events, Sprint Weekend, and you have all of this information there. Now, while I'm talking slowly, will Sprint organizers please walk up to the stage while I'm talking slowly so that you have time to get up to join me on stage? Please do that now. So the location of the venue is on the website. It's a different venue. You're going to a university where we're going to have lots of tables next to each other and electricity, which is all we need, and also coffee and food. So that's good. How do you get there? Well, you just move your body to the location that's shown here. I hear you can walk there and there's also public transportation. Please read this information if you need help. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go do that for you. English is difficult. I know Python, kind of. I used to know Portuguese and I studied English. Nowadays I only know Python, barely. What is a sprint? Kind of like a hackathon, we're just all going to get together and work on a project. Well, what project? Some maintainers did submit projects that they're here to represent and to help you get started with. So on the website you have a list of projects that were proposed. You can also, you can still propose yours. There's also instructions on the website on how to do it. And now, okay, so they're here, okay. I, I, I thought people really didn't understand my, my English. So now I will invite the maintainers of the projects that are listed on the website to do a short convincing. They're going to talk for a little bit, try and convince you that their project is the best ever because they're all awesome, and so that you join them tomorrow. Welcome them, please. Hey, what's up? Um, so I'm Paolo from the CPython core team. Uh, so we will be hosting a, a sprint of CPython. Uh, so you were excited about all this PyRepl thing that Wuka showed. Like now is the time to like implement those emojis, um, if you can convince us. Uh, in any case, it's going to be a bunch of core developers tomorrow. Um, we welcome contributors from all levels, so if you have no experience whatsoever, you are welcome. Uh, you have experience, uh, you are welcome as well. So we will help you like understand how to set up CPython, if you're starting, and if you have already some experience, you can discuss with us like your feature or bug or whatever it is. Um, there is only, I think, uh, three or four core developers, and we are expecting at least like quite a lot of people, so you know, it's just, it's going to be a bit difficult to get time for absolutely everyone, but we will do our best. Uh, but yeah, absolutely come, to, come for us, and uh, we would love you to have them in the sprint. So hi, everyone. I'll try to scroll this down a little bit, so yeah. Yeah, so we are representing the Falcon Web Framework. I know the web framework landscape is really crowded, so you might ask why not this or why not that. There are really many frameworks under the sun, so Cherry Pie, Flask, Bottles, Starlet, Fast API, and whatnot. Uh, i try to make this short. I'm not good at marketing. So Falcon was created by Kurt Griffiths. He's not here, but uh, we are sort of carrying on since he's a bit busy nowadays. Uh, Falcon is really tends to be, tries to be minimal, it tries to be fast, it uh, tries to be stable, so that it really, we, we all know how, how hard it is when frameworks or other libraries break your production. So we're really serious about breaking changes, about, uh, yeah, how, how we change things, and we really go to great lengths not to break your stuff. Uh, if we go back to the sprint, so we really accept people of all levels, uh, we have lots of docs issues, tutorial improvements, also small code improvements, test improvements, the testing code improve, test client improvements and whatnot. 
If we get more first-time contributors or first-time users, we could also make a short like tutorial how to use the thing itself. And also we support both WSGI and ASGI, so async and non-async. So we would love to see you there. Do you want to say anything, Federico? No, it's fine. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Scroll ahead a bit. Is uh, Thomas here? Yes. There you go. Hello, I'm Thomas. Who knows Pigments? So, Pigments is a library to do syntax highlighting of source code. And who knows tools like Slock Count or Clock? So these are tools that count uh, how much source code there actually is in the source code file. So it kind of ignores comment lines and empty lines. And PyGounts compiles those two. It basically takes the information from pigments and then can, for hundreds of program languages, give a basic idea how big is the whole thing. And that's what it does. It started out as a joke at uh, EuroPython Florence, I think. If I can use a break to write a tool that can count more lines of code of source codes in languages as the source code of the tool itself. And basically it succeeded, but uh, over the years it gained more functionality, now it's a bit bigger. And I have a collection of things I want to improve with it. Some of it is maintenance, like removing deprecated code, work with the documentation. Some of it is adding new features, some of it is cleanups, like switching to Pathlib. And I think it's a fairly small code base, so it's easy to work with. I think it's a good, good project for people who want to get into open source, who want to get coding. And I will do a sprint with it. And yeah, you are invited to join and have fun. OK, so now it's my turn. I want to sprint on the Egenix Pyron. How many of you know Egenix Pyron? Can't see, but not that many people. Uh, I gave a talk on this on Thursday, and it's a complete, more or less complete Python runtime in just between four to six megabytes. Um, basically, what I want to do is I have it already ported to 3.11, Python 3.11. I want to port it to 3.12 uh, in the sprint, and maybe even 3.13, depending on how fast that goes. So if you're a good C hacker, if you know what a make file is and can edit it, and if you are very savvy in patching the C Python source code, then yeah, please join me. Thank you. Whoops. So, oh, oh, hi. Okay. Who knows uh, PyO3? Okay, wow, good. Who can write Rust? Oh, good. So uh, tomorrow, um, I'm doing this uh, Pile 3 workshop. I'm not a maintainer of, of Pile 3. I just, you know, kind of um, disclaimer. But um, if you are new to Pile 3, you want to learn how to do it, uh, I actually have written a workshop for uh, PyCon US before. And um, we can do that. Or if you are already familiar with Pile 3 and you can write Rust, if you want to contribute to Pile 3, since I am contributing to Pile 3 as well, so we can just sit together and then maybe, you know, we can help each other. So uh, that's what we're going to do tomorrow morning. Uh, but tomorrow afternoon, um, if you have, you know, you're not interested in Pile 3, but if you want to um, speak at the next year of Python, then um, let's come to uh, the same room and I'll be there and I would uh, try to help you to maybe figure it out um, what, you know, your like, next CFP you can submit to EuroPython next year, or, um, you know, if you kind of, you want to start public speaking, but you are kind of afraid of, or you don't know what to start, like how to start and all these things, I am there to help. So please um, come to see me tomorrow. Thank you. Uh. So I didn't add myself yet, yet, uh, there yet, but uh, if you want to start with electronics and Python in electronics with MicroPython and CircuitPython, now is the easiest way to do it. It has never been so easy. You can build things like that. And uh, there are also handheld game consoles and all this stuff. So uh, that's it. Thank you.
to wrap up, I'm representing project name. We're expecting Y contributors. No, just kidding. There's also going to be a PyCraft, I think, workshop thing where we're going to be building bracelets, if I understood the assignment correctly. With Python symbols on them. The bracelets? All right, so now you know. This was it for the sprints. If you have another idea for a sprint, you can still submit it, but you won't be able to present it here. And now, the closing session. Thank you.